Okay. Well, let us call this meeting to order. It's almost 5.30. Uh, we need a roll call. Baron? Here. Hainstock? Here. Horse? Yes. Mosher? Here. Meyer? Here. I'm asking for a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, I do want to mention that I'm going to move into old business before we do any, the, be, go to next, step six first and do old business so, so the people who are waiting on Zoom can do their part before we do the rest of it. So uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? I motion to approve the agenda. Motion Sorry. made and seconded uh, to the agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimous. Uh, as I just stated, we're going to drop down to number six, old business. Uh, we'll let FAR be an uh, update from FAR, Ted. Turn your sound down, Gerald, and turn your sound off. Because I think this is too loud. Do I go up there like I'm talking to a serial? Do I go? <laughs> Start talking. Yep. Start talking. Go for it. Start talking. Okay. Uh, the updates for the site plan. Um, you can listen. FAR is working with CFU, and I am on, on the uh, site plan for the video transport. Uh, we should have that complete and ready to test by 624. So before the 625 goal of going live for video, uh, Matt Baker continues to work on the manual provision to customers for the impressions. Uh, FAR is the uh, we'll engineer to here to assist Matt and uh, will help with provisioning and tasks. Uh, but Matt Baker will still oversee day to day process. Uh, that's the inside plan updates. Um, any questions before I move on to the outside plan? No questions. No questions. I think I heard that. Right? Oops, uh, better on mute. OSP work has shifted from placement units to pulling fiber and splicing. All mainline duct has been placed. All access points have been placed. And all mainline fiber is pulled in. Uh, current drop ducts complete is 1,558. 88%. We're also trying to uh, release an area at a time, but at the same time, we're trying to uh, put out fires to keep businesses happy that sign up for service. So we are doing our best to uh, keep everybody happy and, and not lose a customer in the uh, sign up process. So uh, splicing is to be estimated to complete in early July. And all of the uh, fiber pulling for the drops is uh, estimated to be done by end of the month. Um, and then the issue, I think uh, Corey's going to talk about as well, but five low-key tickets came in uh, this weekend, and uh, all five had some issues with USIC's uh, workmanship, uh, whether it's being wrongfully cleared, uh, missed locates, um, accuracies, and also added uh, what we call phantom markings where there's no cable there. So um, that's the updates with outside plant. If uh, no questions, I can move on to site surveys and conversions. Go ahead, move on. Okay. Site surveys, uh, VMCU. Uh, customers signed up for the site surveys, 1,793. That's 81% of the town. Site surveys complete, 1,698. That's 94% of the signups. Um, I'm sure everybody understands, but this will never get to 100% of signups due to the lack of response uh, from customers who previously signed up for a survey but did not reply back to Patriot or VMCU for an appointment. So uh, we hope to get close, right? We've done really well. 94% is one of the highest we've ever had. So uh, very good there. Uh, VMCU customers sign up for service. We have, as of 6 4, 574, but Angie just said 603 signups. So we keep uh, going in that in that direction. And conversions complete. There's more than this, but as of 6-4, when we report from Patriot, there's 42 conversions complete. Um, he's averaging six a day and has a good uh, full, full scale uh, calendar. I'm sure Angie can uh, add to that as well. So that, that was the site survey and conversion update. Um, the last thing is uh, budget-wise, uh, the 515 contract with Central is estimated to be close to the contract amount. Uh, again, the closeout process 
for main line is estimated to be done by July 15th. That will tell us exactly how the main line budget it is, but for right now, everything looks fine. Um, out of scope billing from FAR, uh, you'll see a uh, invoice there. Um, so far, a tally since the beginning of the year, uh, it's around 35,000, but that is in part of um, working on the transition to IMON uh, until IMON is, uh, is taking over for the operational uh, services there. So, um, that's why I have any questions. Canvassing the room, I see none. Okay, thank you. I guess thank I you. have a question for oh, you. Tom has a comment uh, or a question for us. Accountant. Uh, there's a lot of work that Central Cable is going to be doing, and they probably won't get us billed by June 30th, even though it's work done before June 30th. Are they going to have an issue with the auditors? Aren't you guys the cruel days? Days? Anyway. It's a question for. One of the board members from the accounting perspective. If you're accrual, you got the work done, even though you haven't been paid, it shouldn't matter. Okay. You got to do the books that way. Yep. Thank you for for. Thank you, Matt. I think we're good. Thank you, everyone. Yep. The next one up would be I'm on. We switch over to Corey. You're up. Val, do you want to move your camera? We see what. They're, we're seeing or are you okay? Um, it is being recorded here. Yeah. Oh, can't hear you, Corey. Right, you're up, Corey. Uh, you're muted. You're muted, Corey. <laughs> Talking about that. Um, as far as the updates, uh, as far as systems go, um, all the systems are in place outside of auto provisioning. Auto provisioning is scheduled to be completed August 1st. That doesn't have an impact on customers. Um, that's a behind the scenes um, issue on that. So as far as billing goes, trouble ticketing, all that's in place, and the first invoices will be sent out on the uh, June 15th cycle. So uh, we're also, since this is the first one, we've made quite a few different reports to kind of automate the check cycles um, to make sure everything within the billing system makes sense and is logical to minimize the potential of errors on that, that first invoice run. Um, as far as the uh, outside plant, we actually started working on that, I believe, last week. Um, we haven't started billing anything for operations, but we took over some of that. To Matt's point, there is a, um, an issue um, with the locate company we have, which is USIC, who is the predominant locator in Iowa. Um, there's no good locate company, frankly. They all have the same issues. Um, but from the reports that came in and from the five or seven tickets in the last few days, it was beyond what anyone could qualify as acceptable. So uh, we'll be reviewing that um, tomorrow, and then we'll have an update to, on that the Thursday morning meeting. But we're going to work to something that what the, what happened in the last few days in the USIC, frankly, isn't acceptable. So we'll remedy that. Um, as far as customer service, um, things along those lines, there's a little bit more training with Angie. Angie's been working incredibly hard, getting caught up on everything. We will be training around the, the finance cycle that includes billing and accounting and things along those lines this week. So she's in line with that first billing cycle. And um, we'll also kind of walk her through in those first few just to make sure everyone's in line. So, um, but uh, the net net is we have a target date of June 25th um, to take over all operational functions that are part of the, the scope of work. What was that date? June 25th. Yes. Okay, thank you. Everybody's scribbling, Corey. Okay. Anyone have any questions from what he's talked about so far? Please tell him so. No questions, Corey. I think we're good. Okay. That's the end of his report. Thank All you. All right. That's the end of your report. You are finished. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Shut him off. Shut him down. <laughs> <laughs> Shut him off. You got the power. I guess I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not this? <laughs> no. <laughs> Me either. Uh, so that takes us to number three, which is Smart Source. Next up. All right. Well, I've got a couple updates for you. Uh, first of all, we've uh, been working with uh, 
uh, marketing on the marketing side of the uh, schedule of uh, social media and marketing coming up focused on getting more people to either come into the office to sign up or sign up online uh, so we keep those orders rolling in so we can keep the conversions rolling in so um, that is um, continuing uh, a lot of that social media and so there's not a great deal of expense with it but uh, we're trying to keep uh, keep ahead of the, that curve so we can keep the demand coming in um, and we're still working with um, on, on bulk cable agreements and in particular the, the challenge is the uh, Lutheran home uh, they are interested in having a bulk TV agreement um, but we need uh, to get in there and essentially do a audit of what their existing wiring looks like so we can figure out what, what rewiring may need to be done and uh, I've exchanged uh, voicemails with the uh, Luther Home Administrator. We haven't actually talked yet. The goal is to set up a three-way meeting with him and um, Patriot and myself just to make sure everybody's on the same page. The, the real challenge there is, yeah, we can hook them up. We'd love to hook them up. We can get an agreement that will work for them. We're not sure when we'll able to actually physically get in the building to do any work that will need to be done so they can have video. Uh, since their older wiring that they have now is uh, uh, really wired for a uh, traditional cable system, not IP. So there's still some pieces that need to come together with that on the Lutheran home. Uh, there are a couple of other uh, properties such as the hotel that have asked about a bulk cable agreement. And so um, I'm still trying to figure out the best way, best form for that agreement. If we have one uh, master contract that the board approves that has a great schedule um, and you just approve that form of agreement one time and then um, Tom can execute individual agreements that fit within that master agreement. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to bring each individual agreement to you as a board to adopt. So I'd be interested in some feedback on, on which way you'd rather do it. Would you um, want to see each individual agreement? You're not going to have a ton of these, you know, maybe five, ten, maybe the most. But would you like to see each agreement and approve each agreement? Or would you like to approve a master contract form of agreement? And then um, Tom has the authority to execute those within the parameters that you set. Any thoughts by anyone on the board? Like the master. The master. Yeah, master. I still like to see the details. So you prefer to see. Each I one? prefer to see each one, just be, not because I'm concerned about authority. I just like to see the details. <laughs> yeah, it's just me. It's I mean, yeah, I mean, the thing to keep in mind is even if you have, if even if you did an agreement yeah. here or there, the board that approves each, you're still going to want to make sure the rates within those are fair, right? So, um, it, you you could differentiate like let's say a property brings you 100 customers, you have the right to give them a little lower rate or a rate break because of the volume. Um, but if you have two different properties because they both have 20 units, they should be paying the same rate. Um, so either way, the rate's got to be fair, whether it's an agreement one at a time or a master agreement. Can I recommend the master kind of touch on there all the individuals in one? <laughs> yeah. You still got master ability. Master scale. Yeah, I would recommend yeah, doing the master, master thing and then have Joe okay. review on that. We <laughs> don't have to do that. I'll work on getting that to you at your next meeting um, so we can move forward with those. And hopefully by then we'll have had a chance to talk to the Lutheran Hall. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, we uh, Tom, we talked over him. We didn't hear what he said. Please. Sorry, we talked over you, Curtis. We uh, need you to go back. Been Are you ready now? Yes, uh, we're ready now. So the uh, so I will bring back a mass a form of agreement that you approve with a rate schedule that then basically Tom will be able to on an individual basis fill in the blanks according to the customer that's requested that. So I'll bring that back to you. Uh, we'll get that to you at your next meeting so you can approve that. And the other thing is we'll continue to follow up with Luther Home and try to get together with them and figure out a technological solution for getting a video. Um, the only other thing I wanted to bring up is, and I don't know if this is uh, something Kim wants to take the lead on or not, but we have had some discussion about um, what ways that we, that, that, that uh, IVET could provide um, bulk internet in effect for 
students that are unable to have internet at home so that they are able to take advantage of remote learning. Um, there's, you know, there's a couple of different ways to approach that. Um, and, and Kim, I don't know if you wanted to talk about this at this point. I don't know if we have a motion ready for you tonight, but, um, you know, uh, do you want to add anything, Kim, before or do you want me to go on? Um, I, I, maybe we can talk about it if you want. She um, said she's going to talk about it. <laughs> All right, yeah. I mean, we, some of the options I met with the school, um, Mr. Kreppen and Ms. Mary, Mary Joni and Zach and Brandon, and um, we kind of came up with some options. You guys saw some of the things that I kind of drafted up as, uh, as, as kind of things, one of them being an, a bulk um, thing, one of them being kind of a just a rate um, for them to be able to go with, and some kind of three-way options there. Um, you had some other ideas, though, Curtis. What were those? She said you had some other yeah, ideas. Uh, okay, you heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's two way uh, two ways to do it. The one that Kim's talking about a bulk agreement where the school agrees to write you a check for, and then they mm -hmm. deploy that service to the students they've identified as needing access. Um, another way to do it, which might be a simpler way, is in your current rate policy you have a VLAN uh, charge, and that's if somebody wants a virtual local area network. That's a point-to-point -point connection. Uh, that's really what the school is looking for. They need a VLAN to connect from the student's home to the school district. And, and th that way the student is, although they're writing over your fiber, they are technically directing to those assets, whether it be the internet or videos or educational programs or whatever, through the school servers, through the school's connection. So what you could do is, is simply uh, revise your rate policy and add a, uh, a, a rate for an educational VLAN, define that as um, uh, access purchased by the school on behalf of students and price it the same as you with the bulk agreement. Uh, but then the school could uh, essentially buy, if they wanted or needed more than the number that we were talking about, then they could just add another deal plan, uh, educational deal plan to that. So that was kind of the other way of looking at this. Um, with, on that concept, we we would still have to put the router in the home. Yes. Okay. And in, in all both concepts. Yeah, I do. Right. The yeah, no, it's, sorry, it's, yes. didn't it's only about yeah. how it's run through the computer is what you're talking about through the school's server. Yep. On both options, the school would still determine who qualified, right? Yeah. We don't yes. want to be doing that. Mm -hmm. No. And the, those uh, those qualifications that we, we discussed at the meeting were um, first to be free students, qualified for free and reduced, and then the reduced students, and then as kind of needed, um, depending on extreme circumstances, like a foreign exchange student comes to a home that would never normally have, or a medical situation, or something like that. Um, and it can be done as more of a kind of like our. And what's the, what's the fund called that Sandy runs? I always call it a cup of cold water, but that's what it's called church. <laughs> Sandy's, um, Sandy's student fund that she has that she uses for um, emergency situations or things like, you know, like buy basketball shoes for a kid who wants to yeah. run basketball. Right. Like that, that would be kind of be how we'd handle it. So I did notice an email that they targeted 50 at the high school level. There are 50 about 50 students is what they would max out, they would think. Doesn't eight? K through eight, aren't those kids in need too though? I mean. It would depend on what the um, plan would look like, but for the most part, the high school students are the only ones that have a school issue device that would go home, um, unless they would go to virtual learning lower levels, and then we kind of talked about school students getting school, school devices, but not entirely. Some of our lower elementary, it's difficult for them to log on independently, and they need yeah. a lot of support and guidance to do that. Um, what about so med middle school? Middle school would would fall into some of the distance learning capabilities. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the devices did not go home necessarily, uh, but if we're going to go in the future, it will be required learning. So this year it was voluntary learning up through eighth grade, and ninth and twelfth grade was required learning. That would expand uh, as a governor's rule to all students would be required learning. So but that can look differently. It doesn't have to be on the computer. It can be, you know, the uh, consumable workbooks that kids use, use at school. They can use at home and different things like that. So, 
So the technical solution, the VLAN mm -hmm. approach is, is great. So basically, it's the same as if those students are on campus, right? Mm -hmm. Same access to the server, same information. No ability to go anywhere that you can't go, and the same as if you're sitting on the campus. Yeah. That does so, help with our protection of student privacy and um, web filtering. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is, why wouldn't we go bigger with this? What's the danger of giving that access to every student? So the question I have is, I mean, there's an economic element, but there's so much grant money right now for telehealth, for educational outreach, state level, federal level. So assuming we can get funding, but even if we couldn't, uh, the experience of being connected on campus from a student's perspective, I assume, is a better experience than if they're just using the internet at home. Is that a, is that a true assumption? Are there more resources available if they're connected into school resources? Uh, or, or maybe not yet. With the Apple computers, yes, they can get on self-serve and do different things. With the Chromebooks, it wouldn't necessarily okay. uh, play a difference. So anticipating that, anticipating that students will want to be able to do what they can do at school, this is an awesome option for that because it's a private, it's a private network connection back into so the they, school. They can only go to the school. They can't go to the school during the day and then yeah. the rest of the family go out on the internet and surf at yeah. night. So if I'm understanding that the way right? it would be set up in the home, you would set up a, a separate Wi-Fi yeah. access which would be hardwired or directed to that yeah, school server. So, you know, when I go on the school campus and I connect through Wi-Fi, I can't go to GroupMe, I can't do anything on my phone. So it'd be exactly that, Mike. So it'd be mm -hmm. that same secure, which I think is an awesome yeah, potential. Yeah, I just noticed in that email about the ones they have now. Families, I think you said, in their families can use mm -hmm. families this, use the device, yeah. even though the majority technically they're not supposed to or whatever. Yeah. But the will that still happen with this new system? It's still filtered. They're not able to get to all the things that yeah. outside of. I'm just, the only other thing I do, the family uses it for mm -hmm. internet to their family members, and so then they won't buy a service from us because they can use their kids for ten dollars. That's yeah, my biggest that's fear kind of is. Where you we've know, not expanded make more than sure we, yeah, we um, keep that in. But I would say that unless things have drastically changed, which they could very well in the last few years, <laughs> the majority of things that our students are using are those asynchronous materials where they can use them on other Wi-Fi. They don't have to be connected to the school's server right. to be able to do things. Yeah. I mean, other than self-service, which is really just to like download applications that they would need to use on their device. Okay. Um, most everything can be done on a connection. It doesn't have to be the school's connection. So, I mean, other than filtering, I don't know what other advantage we'd have yeah. to expanding it to all kids. I, are there, I mean, we have Zoom and other platforms. Are there education-specific applications that you could lock down but still, you know, lock down to the student population but enable for everybody, like video? I, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. I just really like the idea, and I think the private network element enables this kind of discussion without... I mean, there's a little concern that anybody in the household could get access to the school resources, sure. But if the school resources were throttled and such, throttled's the wrong word, it's protected in such a way. Right word, like throttled down into I mean, protected so that yeah. um, if I anybody wanted to go learn something, awesome. awesome. <laughs> I do know from disciplinary actions <laughs> that yeah. we've had to take with certain students over the years. Yeah. Um, you can lock down a student, student's device to Canvas and this and like like the, the things that they absolutely need for their classes. Um, that would take a lot of management on Brandon's end, so I wouldn't offer that unless yeah. you would agree to that. But um, And that just takes a lot more hoops to jump through for the IT person, but uh, it can be done. Whether I want to do it for 500 kids. And my take on this is, is the school's interest is really the same as ours. They want this connection. They don't want it to be abused. They're going to do everything they can to make sure that it isn't abused. Right. And and so again, with this direct connection, makes it so they we we are not right. in the way at all. They can do whatever they need to do. I think 
from what the school needs to move forward that they want they need to know that we're okay with that much there's a lot of details to work out um, but I'm hearing tonight is that I think we're okay with that as long as it's control and our point is not to lose customers that we would normally get mm -hmm. and part of it is, is we're talking about a slower speed which hasn't been discussed here tonight but right. a slower speed than 100 um, it's, it's filtered it runs through the school it has to be on the school laptop that they have at home they can't take another computer or their phone and connect to that same connection that work right. mm -hmm. so it's only that computer so once we get that tight, and then if there's somebody abusing it, we can always go in and take care of that one. <laughs> right, and it's, yeah, it's a lower speed of like 15 meg, and it's only for 10, that they're proposing for only 10 months of the year. So it's not outside of school time, it's yeah. just within the school bounds. So then the next question that you asked in the email, mm -hmm. yeah. we've got the cost of the internal equipment, mm -hmm. hooking it up, and then if there's trouble, troubleshooting, I'm sure we'll be called to fix that. Any idea? If you're talking 50 versus 500, what's the cost? Have we tried to budget or pay for that, or do we even know what that could be? Well, at the, this point, before the 31st of, of this year, or December 31st of this year, anybody that the the, wire, the routers are a part of this of the installation, so it's really the installation that we would need to worry about. And then, I guess, the years going forward, if we had the same 50 that were kind of a part of that, then they're just taking it back into the home, so that insulation piece, um, and maybe that's something we can work out funding-wise. Um, but I don't know if it's. I just, I don't know you brought it up. I just didn't have an idea roughly yeah. where we'd be at. And how much it costs? If we're talking twenty thousand, or we're talking hundred thousand. I mean, I can't imagine well, it being a big number. Tom can answer that question. What what is our cost for putting one in a home? Insulation. One just the home insulation. Installation. I can speak. I've seen too many invoices to remember. I thought it was two fifty. I was thinking it's either two fifty or three hundred. Corey, we're asking what the cost of an install is for a new home once we're past the initial roll. Is oh. it two fifty? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> can you hear me? Making everyone think. Why? Is that my computer or your computer? Up the back. Kind of. Yeah, it states that Gerald's uh, computer is low signal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's more my uh, my cell phone, but okay. Um, well, we'll come back to it. Yeah. Is is there anything else, Curtis? Do you have anything else to report? What was the question? The question is, what's the cost of an install? Once we're done with all the initial, I think it's two fifty, isn't it, in the contract? I'll pull it up here momentarily. It's in the contract. I, I think it's two fifty. It, either one fifty or two fifty. It's in my head. Two fifty is on the. It's four something. As far as like once paying for it, we talked about there are three uh, options. Um, in the email okay, as well. we're gonna move on with it. Okay. Thanks, man. Sorry. No, <laughs> Sorry. Um, but then you can't hear me. <laughs> um, so. Whether we had the, like the the setup where um, where we just have a, a, a reduced rate and so that it's a smaller amount of money that's paid, or it's the full amount and and we have community donation or vice versa. I mean, we can. That's a way to and cut really some of these think costs we should, as well. The school should be going after. I mean, the school I'm yeah. sure is, but there's there are Different funds there, yeah. so I wouldn't want to come up out of pocket too much on the utility well, side. Yeah. I, I don't want to support it, but I think there's. Isn't I think there there's grants for us too, possibly. I mean, there's grants for telehealth, there's grants for education. I mean, that's something we should be looking at is to help defray all these costs. There's money out there for internet in rural Iowa, and I think we should be looking for yeah. that too, not I mean, just the school. The two biggies are the education and health care. Yeah. Especially but I'm fully supportive of it. I think it's a great idea. Especially if it needs to go to everybody, not just the yeah. 50 kids yeah. that we're initially And getting if that funding comes mm -hmm. from a federal or state source, that's a great situation. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, reminds me. Price to be me if you like. What's that? I have that price in front of me if you like. Yeah, what is it? If you have 240 per year included, and then additional ones are 195 each plus the cost of so the drop is applicable. Okay. 195. Now, one thing, too, we want to make sure, just to uh, touch on this, is we just want to make sure that the ONT is being deployed or capable of doing each tree. I, I have to research that. I always look at that. But you want to make sure just from a 
ballpark, but just that those OMPs can support B tree. B lands. Mm -hmm. They better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yep. Please check that. Curtis, do you have anything more that you'd like to discuss? Uh, no, not in particular. Just, uh, you know, either way, if you guys come up with uh, this is something you want to do, I think it'll be fairly straightforward to create a policy to do it, um, either as an agreement with the school or just making it part of your rate class for call it an educational VLAN, virtual classroom, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, the key is that it will, the only people that there, this is a there would be a rate class with one customer, and the one customer is the school district. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Unless you, you wanted to extend it to community colleges and whatnot, but I think it, right, at this point, it, your 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 one customer is the school district, and they're going to be the ones to decide which households um, get it or don't get it. And I love Gerald's idea about going on grabbing some money somewhere and making it more universal. That new. Uh, uh, gear program this, that the state got money for from the federal government. I just honestly haven't had a chance to look at it, but it's $262 million in emergency education relief to expand broadband access. So maybe maybe some of that money could come in handy for the school district. Yeah. On the topic of school, I don't know when E rate season is, but we're going to need to get registered a service provider ID. Have we thought about that or talked about it yet? Um, Brandon's already in the process of doing that. For, this for us. For for, oh, oh yeah. I mean, we want to be the provider, so, so we'll want That's to. That's Corey. I think Joe Thornton from uh, Consortium was working on that. Okay. Okay. Good. I'll verify, though. All right. And we'll want to make sure we're in the health care, rural sure. health care fund also. Um, Brandon said that they're not going to E-rate this for the school. They're, so that they're, we're going to be their second provider. Um, so that wouldn't be E-rateable. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but yeah, good point. And with the hospitals and clinics, mm -hmm. there's health care funds. Yeah. All right. Any That's the question. Anything else, Curtis? <laughs> I think <laughs> I don't know if you could hear everything or not, but no. Okay. Oh, you're muted now, so we really can't hear. It was, it was a little choppy, but yeah. yes. It was choppy in person too. <laughs> Okay. All right. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Where are we on the list here? Uh, okay. So the only other person on there that's still on the list is for old old business under the VM the utility board. Is he? Is Rob still on there? <laughs> Rob is here. Yep. I think you guys can leave if you wish. Yep. Uh, Rob, I think you're up now. Yeah. yeah, is that okay or no? Thanks, all. Yep, thank you. Okay. And yes, I'm going to allow that we're going to go ahead and let him do this presentation. Realize that this is, it was underneath the business for the electric utility. We will come back and discuss it at that time. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and let you do your presentation, Rob. Oh, you're muted, Rob. There we go. All right. Okay. Uh, I did send out my PowerPoint presentation to Rich uh, Hainstock in advance, and uh, so we can go through that one really quick on as far as what our company does and uh, some of the projects we've done over the years. Uh, Rich had indicated there's not really much of a selling point on solar. It sounds like the utilities are... Uh, like solar and so I can quick go through the PowerPoint and and then we'll skip to the questions so is there any chance uh, you can share your screen disabled, yeah host disabled participants yeah. screen sharing. I think Chris didn't allow you to share your screen okay share. maybe Chris are you there Chris is here he's muted Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Who's Rob and where's It's Rob, H-A-C-H. -H. Rob, we need an introduction. Some members here who don't know who you are. Very good. 
Yeah, no, I'm sorry. My name is Rob Hawk. Uh, I'm a renewable energy developer. Started in 2002, shortly after Enron went bankrupt. Uh, I was an Enron employee. They had purchased our company, Zond, uh, and, and then I became an Enron employee. Uh, I'm located in Storm Lake, Iowa. Uh, I'm on the Alta Municipal Utility Board where I am a resident of, of Alta. And so, uh, Rich, I reached out to Rich. Rich had bought a solar project or worked with um, John Root on a solar project, I think in 08. So that's how we got the introduction. And so Rich was interested in learning about how to do a community solar garden for <coughs> for Benton. So uh, some of the projects, if I can get to the PowerPoint, uh, you might or we might have to circulate the PowerPoint afterwards, but. Uh, community solar gardens. Um, our attorney did the community solar garden for Cedar Falls. Uh, we have about four community solar gardens in Minnesota. Uh, we just finished up a project for the city of Marathon Town, 263 people. Uh, and then we're going to be starting for a 4.1 megawatt uh, solar project, half megawatt of storage, Tesla storage batteries for Grinnell College. So, and that's what we've done in the past. We have a plethora of other projects that we have going on in the future. So, one of the things that we do know is that renewable energy continues to go down. Uh, the city of Alta just signed a 20-year uh, power purchase agreement with, um, through NIMECA uh, for 1.5 cents a kilowatt for wind generation coming off of a brand new wind farm in, in Oklahoma. And you're going to see a lot of that part of the conversation tonight. So it was kind of nice that the start of this meeting was delayed a little bit because I was on a utility board meeting. And part of the conversation is we put up $1.5 million for uh, a 0.14% of Walter Scott coal fire power plant. And uh, Walter Scott has been running for three months now. And of the four coal fire plants we own, Walter Scott is the only one that's been running. Uh, and it's running at 24.8%. So then the conversation was, what do we do with our coal fire? Do we, do we start investing on that? So uh, the point of that conversation is by investing in a community solar garden uh, for Benton, you're being progressive, you're getting out in front of the, the, the curve as coal fire generation is going down. <laughs> we're trying to decide whether we're going to make any money and by selling our our coal generation or whether or not uh, we, we're going to be giving it away. We're a little bit nervous about that. So by being in front of this thing, by putting in a community solar garden uh, for Vinton, you're going to be, you're going to have a predictable uh, cost of energy for the next 20, 30 years, depending on how long you want to run the, the solar project. Uh, you won't have any crazy swings and maintenance costs. Uh, so uh, it's just very uh, proactive decision to start putting in more and more solar. Uh, Rich wanted to talk about the community solar gardens and the benefits, the pros and cons. And uh, you know, in the last meeting, uh, board meeting you had, it was to whether or not to make this a community solar garden. So I'm really here to ask a few questions as much as answer questions for you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, some of my answers will be contingent on a timeline. Is this a, a 2020 project, which is still at this point very viable, or is this, uh, like many other projects, taken as you go and, and we'll get it done when we get it done? Do you have a, a deadline? The idea for a 2020 project is because the federal tax credits are reduced at the end of this year. So there's an incentive okay. for our citizens who go into this to move forward yet this year. That's not enough reason to hurry through and do a bad job, but that's a reason well, to be agree. thinking about 2020. Yeah, well, and if we get started in 2020, it may not be. It, uh, the, and the reason why I asked that question, uh, Jeff Paulson did the project for uh, Cedar Falls and, and uh, Cedar Falls entered into a power purchase agreement uh, in order to get that financed and that going and that uh, that delays the process uh, if you can imagine tax equity investors 
uh, if you go with an institutional investor, there's uh, far fewer uh, at this time than there were uh, three months ago. Uh, so there's not as many people with a tax appetite right now. Uh, if we pass those tax incentives on to your your customers, uh, that's certainly very much of an interest for them. So, but uh, 2020 project is certainly very viable at this time. Um, and Rich gave me a one dollar or one million dollar budget. Uh, is that still a target, or, or can I enter on into options? Uh, we'll entertain options. The reason for the million dollar budget was it made it easy to compare, and it was something that was doable by the utility. That's before we start talking about a solar garden project. The solar garden will be determined by how much demand our citizens have. We have, as a board, we have not discussed that something that, like the utility, will pick up any part the solar garden isn't sold to the citizens. I don't think that's where we want to go. We want it all to be a solar garden. So, okay. the size and, depends upon demand. Yep. Sorry. No, that will certainly streamline the process. If it's uh, it's a it's a project that uh, the MEU. Uh, initiate starts and then allows them to buy from the MEU, uh, that'll, that'll accelerate the process. If it's a long uh, fine financing, then it, that, then it will be good to, we'll be lucky to get the ground broken, which will still hold the tax credits in place. That's what we did with Grinnell College. We got our project started uh, last year and all the, all the whole the tax credits in place. So, um, so that helps me out with those questions. Uh, some of the questions that Rich wanted me to answer, you know, there are customers that are going to have limited space for a solar installation. By going with a community solar garden, I was looking at or by your substation. Uh, you have a 38 acres over there. That's very much, you can do a phase one, phase two, phase three. You can expand quite a bit uh, in that area over time. Uh, so I like that area. We also look down by the water treatment plant. You're, you're going to have a little bit more congestion. Um, where uh, connecting at your substation would be the most ideal uh, situation for your expansion over time. So uh, that's the area that I like the best of the two locations that we looked at. Um, and so by doing a solar garden, it's, as opposed to having it on top of houses, your cost of energy uh, is going to be a lot less because you're going to get an economy as a scale. You're going to get optimal production uh, for the solar project. You'll have to deal with trees. You're going to have to deal with different angles of the solar panels on a roof uh, where that site over by your substation, you have no real obstructions other than SIPCO's uh, transmission line, uh, which we can uh, address. So we are using single access trackers for our Grinnell project uh, as opposed to stationary then you're able to pick up more generation. It's not cost effective to do uh, trackers on a, uh, uh, a homeowner's property, but on a utility scale project like this, you can again bring your cost of energy down. So, who, uh, who owns? I guess I don't know anything about. We couldn't ask questions last time we had this presentation. Who owns the solar? Do we own it and sell it to individuals? Yeah. We think if we owned it, they wouldn't yeah, get the credit. Ways. Uh, and you can sell it in different blocks. Uh, and, and, I'll, and from this conversation, I'll, I'll get more information on how you want to put this together. You can do a percentage of ownership, uh, which will be the least amount of paperwork. Uh, yeah, and if anyone has owned, ever owned timeshares, you, know, you can understand there's a new concept where you own points. Uh, it's very easy to transfer points as opposed to a deed. Uh, my parents have timeshares, and uh, it's, it's a lot more time and a lot more money to do a deeding of that amount, but, but they can buy a percentage uh, into the project, and that's a lot more cost-effective, easy to transfer. Um, you have less legal fees. And yeah, so that's the simplest, most cost-effective, easy way to enter into this thing, uh, more or less like a membership dues. Uh, so that's the that's the simplest process as opposed to issuing deeds. 
and then the production would go uh, against their electric bill. So um, it's going to be the easiest if uh, VMEU wants to be able to own it outright and we just build it, develop it for VMEU. It will be very easy for VMEU to manage uh, the project as opposed to having to deal with tax equity investors and so forth. So uh, that would be my recommendation for speed of installation, uh, less headache. headache. Uh, when Rich and I first started talking about this, I was actually trying to sway him away from a solar garden uh, because um, I was on city council previously. <laughs> And then we went over to, and then uh, our utility manager recruited me to go onto the utility board. And, and it's so nice to be on the utility board because you don't have very many people coming in and, and voicing any issues on the utility board. And, and that's one of the things that uh, if VMEU just owns it outright, you don't have to deal <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. If you've been on city council, I love being on the utility board. I just got another... Tonight they told me I have another 60 years on the utility board. And I said I'll, I'll take it any day of the week. Don't put me on city council again. <laughs> so, Note to self. Yeah. Okay, Rob. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, we're going to get back to this later, and most of the question I think that I can answer, and if I can't, we can get the answers later. Is there anything else you'd like to wrap up with that you would want us to know before we we stop you? Uh, are you are you hard uh, set on doing this as a community solar garden? Another way to ask that same question is: We haven't had the conversation about doing it ourselves, and we're not hard set on doing it ourselves. <laughs> so, I, so yeah. we can't say that. Because if you do your first phase as a VMEU own a project, and then you'll be able to get a lot more buy-in uh, for the next round. You have plenty of land out there. You only Restriction is going to be from FER, what your FERC alloc or what your your generation agreement is with your uh, supply contracts, and so if you can do this as phase one, the MEU owns it. Your your customers will be able to see it. Uh, and you'll be able to a lot more quickly have adoption adoption later. So uh, what I was trying to persuade Rich into doing is that it's a VMEU project uh, and not a community solar garden because you will, uh, it will go quicker. Um, you'll be able to demonstrate to the town that, uh, that Vinton can do this and that it's a very cost effective solution. And then the other, and then your customers can buy in on phase two. You might get to phase two and say, hey, I don't want the headaches of dealing with additional um, customer constraints. Hey, why is my solar panels not producing enough? And uh, that's some of the things we contend with on, on, on most of the time. I mean, <laughs> half of the day is, is uh, well, have you moved your router? And uh, did you get a different SSID? And, and so most of our issues that we contend with is network related, not necessarily the uh, solar. Uh, the solar project that we've done. So um, so that would be my recommendation. The tax credits then become a less less of a, a point of issue because you're not you're, you're tax exempt. You're not going to have to pay taxes on it. But uh, you compare this with any other generation out there, this is going to pay back faster because when the solar is produced in the most, that's when you're buying on the spot market and paying the most. So I guess, so my final question, uh, would you like me to do a decision make matrix between doing a community solar garden or and VMEU and showing you the uh, pros and cons of each? Or do you want to go with the, uh, I love our utility customers. I really do because their, their checks are always on time and most of them. Um, and, but if you do a community solar garden, then you're just asking for more people to come through the door, which I'm not opposed to. Uh, but uh, if you can keep it simple, I always, I'm always a big advocate of keeping it simple. I, we have we have several people on the board who like lots of data, so I'm sure they'd be happy to see any uh, matrix you'd be willing to put together for us. Decision makers on, on either or. Okay. 
and you do not need to set it, do not concern yourself about when we're meeting next. Just send it to me. I will send it to the manager, and he will send it by email out to the board members. There, so whenever it is done, send it over. Okay. Okay. I'll send. Uh, I know Rich has the PowerPoint that I was going to be able to share tonight, which uh, I can't. So that's okay. Uh, you can just fl uh, flip through it and see all the projects that we're that we've done and what we're doing. Uh, so we're uh, we started in 2002, shortly after Enron, like I said earlier. And I've just uh, stayed in Iowa because I like doing what I do. So, right. well, thank you for putting so up with like our that. glitches tonight. And we'll reconnect. Yeah. All right, thank you, Rob. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Well, hi, Angie. <laughs> She's there. She came into view. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, can you see who else is still on there besides yeah. Angie? I can. Chris, obviously. Yep, we've got four participants, Chris, Angie, and one attendee. We have one attendee, okay. All right. Okay, well, we have one more actual physical person here who's been waiting very, very patiently. Oh, this has been great. I love it. So I'm going to ask you the question. We have to go back and do about, oh, big half of the agenda on the utilities and then come back to the electric board. Okay. You're, you're at the end of the electric board. I will give you the option going now, or wait, do, do you want to see the rest of the show and wait till the end? It's, it's solely up to you. I can do either. I find it fairly entertaining, but <laughs> I would say that it connects uh, to the community garden a little bit. Yes, in it does. This, in this, in that yes, it does. So, so I have one quick comment. Please. My computer's about to die. I didn't bring a power source. <laughs> so. I think Chris is hosting, so when this goes away, it's gone. It's still recording, isn't it? He's still hosting. He's still hosting it. He's still recording it. So, but, but is there any camera to, source? But he won't be able to hear us or see us. Okay. They, so they can go to Vinton today on Facebook and watch. And that, yeah, go ahead and Rich. announce that on okay. there. On Vinton today, it's being streamed live. All right. I'm Did Facebook. you hear that? I'm gonna I'm gonna lose battery power here shortly. Uh, and the meeting is being streamed live on Vinton today. So that would be another Facebook way to. Page. I'm sorry? On the Facebook page. On the Facebook <coughs> page. So I apologize. This is going to go down soon. <laughs> okay. So and I'll probably sign off. Does Angie have anything she wants to say? Anything you want to add, Angie, before we're out? Uh, no, not unless you guys have questions for me. All heads shaking okay. no. Thank no questions, Angie. Angie. Thank you. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. We're just going to shut it off because it's going to go down anyway. Yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll come a little closer to it. Please. Yeah. As you wish. You can bring it up and people can hear. So the, the school district is very much interested in the same pieces that Rob was talking about. And so uh, currently the utility budget for electricity is a little over three hundred thousand dollars for the school district and through the physical plant and equipment levy uh, which is a tax generated uh, fund uh, we are able to purchase um, pieces of equipment to use for the school well the particular piece of equipment that we could purchase would be solar panels and those solar panels would be able to generate um, different percentages of power so you could go with 50 percent of the power which would cut our utility bills in half uh, there is actually enough space in the buildings and the grounds of the school district that we could have enough solar panels to power the entire school district uh, through solar which would which would eliminate those uh, utility bills for us throughout the uh, school year so uh, we have the charge from the school board to pursue more information uh, about solar and so one of the pieces is me coming to you tonight because uh, we really feel being good stewards of the environment solar power is obviously uh, more efficient and uh, better on the environment and two it's really being good stewards of our taxpayer dollars so uh, being really effective with those taxpayers because uh, as Rob said the initial uh, uh, data that we received from some companies is that it would be a payoff within six years and so the, the generation of power uh, would then be coming to us for free after that. Lifespan of about uh, 30 years uh, up to. Solar panels do lose the uh, efficiency over time, and so they're not going to generate as much on those latter half of the years, but would still be producing enough for us that we could do that. 
And so that's where we're coming here tonight to, to share where we're at, uh, still fact-finding, um, and then to extend an invitation. And so we have a subcommittee that uh, is going to be meeting on June 22nd at 6 p.m. And we would love to have uh, a utility board member uh, to be partners with us, to, to look into this and to see what it, it, it would do um, here in, in our community and what it could take place. So um, we could be the guinea pigs for a uh, uh, solar garden, per se. Um, questions that we had is, is through the utility, obviously we're purchasing, how much we can produce on our own. So are we allowed, would we be allowed to produce that much energy on our own? Um, because obviously that you would be losing us as a, as a customer in that sense. Um, but the taxpayers of our community are getting a good break. Another reason why it's really, really good for the school district is we currently pay those bills out of our general fund. Um, and using our physical plant equipment levy, we could then defer the costs out of our general fund and we would have more money for educational purposes, hiring teachers, buying supplies for our students. And so it really benefits us on a few different fronts and why it's um, just so promising of an idea. How much did you say that you're currently spending on electrical? Uh, it's just shy of like $350,000. Annually? Yes. That's for our, all four buildings, including uh, the shelter building. Yeah. The high school loan, uh, so we've even looked at what it would l be at different buildings, and so the high school loan generates around one hundred and thirty to $150,000 uh, dollars worth of, of electricity a year, and so even doing a building um, would be good. Uh, through our committee work, we're going to try to identify next steps, and the scope of the project could be various sizes. And uh, we, we're really to the point where we need an engineer to kind of say what would be the specs and what would be appropriate, so that way we could go to companies and actually get solid numbers on, on a project of scale of our choice. So questions and or anyone would like to take me up on that? I, committee I would meeting on encourage any one of you four who, are, if you're interested, to be on that committee. I, I will not be on the committee. I, mean, I have too much connection as it is. So, <laughs> anyone who's interested, anymore, right? well, so he, he might be surprised. <laughs> 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 and anyway, so is it, if it's of any interest any of you four, this is your chance to speak up. You don't have to do it right now, but this is this is your opportunity. Um, and unless nobody spoke up, so well, uh, hopefully someone will come and join your meeting. I, I would. I'm coming out that day. Where is it at? Uh, the central office at the school. So the boardroom. 22nd of June. Monday, June 6 o'clock. Monday, June 22nd. Day after graduation. What if two members show up? Not a problem. We Unless welcome. you have a problem with it. We would welcome it. <laughs> I'll just plan on it. It's a double-edged sword because we're cutting our revenues, mm -hmm. but we're oh, also sure. helping the school system, so that's going to affect us greatly too as far as what we do going forward. I don't want to burst your bubble on one thing though. Uh, we have infrastructure that will be serving you and you won't be separating from the grid. So you don't produce any uh, power at night so you're going to have, you're not getting, you, there's no way you can uh, get rid of it at all. I mean, Sounds like a good partnership opportunity though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. You want to do it, it makes yeah. sense for taxpayers. We, we don't want to lose the revenue but yeah. at the same time it's we want to do the right thing. Do we get credit or something too for green, the green power that we purchase? Um, there was something out there that yeah. we always get so much. I'd have to find out whether, since we're in RPGI, uh, and see the follows goes through this, you know, you wind up deciding whether the uh, solar is behind the meter or ahead of the meter. And if it's behind the meter, uh, it's it's treated differently than uh, when you're buying off the grid. Cause you have to predict what you're going to put into the grid when you're uh, ahead of the meter. That was my next question. Our, how, what does that do to the RPGI contract and what's that do to our capacity credits, which are huge? There, there is capacity for solar. Okay. Uh, it's not, yep. it, it's, it's derated quite a bit because you know, it's not on all the time. But uh, I can't remember, they might take the capacity of a garden and you know put it at 20% or something. 
for capacity, but it is added capacity. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a few. I think you know CFU's got a 1.5 megawatt system up there, and uh, State Center just got to put one in, and I think they put theirs in. Probably, I don't know if it was by the sewer plant, but they put it on land they had that uh, it's not in town. Uh, you don't know it's necessarily there, but it's in a really good spot to, to catch the sun because there's no trees and stuff like that. But, uh, so there's there's some units that have already gone through this, and I guess I'd be interested in knowing what would they do different today, you know, would they do a solar garden or not? I mean, I think CFU went through a solar garden route, and some of the others that started out went that way. And that was because of the tax credits. No units could... Uh, benefit from it but people could so they would buy in and uh, they'd get credit for whatever it generated and that and uh, there's supposed to be some connection right because like the month of may when there's no sun at all i don't know how these panels work they you know build up power for so long the batteries but they can't you can have battery power. backup but you know that's where you're putting the infrastructure these are all these are all very good questions yep. they're questions for the subcommittee uh, sure. Not during the meeting tonight. If that's okay. I mean, these are excellent points. We're learning. Okay. Yeah, you're learning that, and 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 I do know that that the school is aware of most of these issues. They're, you're not bringing up things that they're they're totally unknown to them. So uh, we understand. Uh, they understand all these things need to be worked through. I really appreciate that. It sounds like two of you are willing to go to the meeting. Uh, we have two sets of ears from the board. Uh, yeah. I think that's great. Thank you. Anything else? No. Well, sign. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Well, it's been a strange meeting so far. Do we need a slight <laughs> break? Anyone need to check the bathroom or anything? No? All right. We're going to go back and see if we can figure out where we've left off and where we've been and, and move forward. <laughs> Thank you for uh, allowing all these people to speak before we ran out of battery. <laughs> Okay, on the Vent Municipal Communications Utility Agenda, item number three was skipped over. The consent agenda has four, yeah, four items under it. I'm looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda, and then we'll discuss those four items. Is there such a motion? Motion by Melissa, second by Gerald. Thank you. Uh, the first item is receive and file board meeting minutes of May 12th. Are there any questions regarding the May 12th minutes? No. Okay. Second one is receiving the file the special board meeting minutes of May 27th. Any discussion or corrections on that? No. Okay. Third one is approve invoices. I got a comment for you on the first page. We have our first bill from IMON on there for internet video and voice. It's uh, 16890 it doesn't include anything on the operational or the billing, but uh, we don't have a billing cycle set up to uh, gain the revenues to pay for it now. So you know, just let me know we got a bill. It's the first one. You want us to prove that, or I mean, you're adding it to this, or it, it's in there. It's already. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just just it out. Yeah. Oh, the eight, yeah. eight, eight, yeah. nine, yeah. 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 Seven, sixteen, eight, nine. Okay. And it's things that are they're they're by the month. Uh, so, you know, we didn't have to uh, prorate anything or anything. So. Yep. And it's, it's for stuff that we we were doing in May. So, you know, they're collecting what we used. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. It's just the first bill. Okay, thank you. Anything else you'd like to clarify in the invoices? No, that was the only one I want to make sure that uh, you were aware of. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for invoices? I'm assuming the 50 remote controls. And advanced media and there's 50 mesh dual Wi-Fi. Is that relating to the 50 that we're getting for the school, or we haven't really? We haven't approved any of those things yet. No. Yeah, no. no. no we it's usually buy nice stuff thing. in batches. They'll buy it. They don't buy it all at one crack, crack to uh, avoid the warranties by the time it gets used. So they've been there's a, there's another quote I gotta sign to get the next batch of equipment as things get moved. Yeah. Well, as it goes along, we should be seeing those pretty regular. Each month now. So well, once we get everything back. installed, yeah. then there'll just be an inventory amount that we'll maintain. Yep. So. Okay. So that's pretty close to what's been turned up, basically. Well, we have, yeah. 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 Not yet. Just coincidence, but not yeah. on the video <laughs> side. But it will be. <laughs> it's prepping. Yep. Okay. Any other questions, Frank? Uh, there was a deal in there from Todd. Uh, Kleinkoff, 
advisory services? Yeah, and that was probably for six months worth of stuff. He doesn't build every month. He just it's project update. Didn't yeah, and give he's, us an he's working on something. He's working on the financial thing, so now that the feasibility study was done, I asked him to go back and look at what the real orders are and the real pricing and uh, where can we look at it, seeing where we need to be focused on. So I just thought maybe he had an update report we could look at, but no. Well, he, we got real data now uh, with the orders we've got. I understand. You know, but here's it's everything else the model, right? yeah. the model then. Yeah, we're just trying to update what we projected. Okay. And, and he, is he going to update that? Regularly, is that a monthly? Is so he going to hand the model off to us to update, or is he going to? Eventually, I think what we want to do is have him analyze how we started out. So he's got uh, bills for like a half an hour for uh, January, February, March. So this is covering a, a big distance, and uh, hopefully he'll be able to uh, point out where the model was good and where we need to be looking at to so we'll make changes. So. We'll he was kind of the finance we'll guy for this thing with Curtis, right? Right. That's, I thought maybe he had a report or something. With not yet. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I just got done asking him last week, hey, look, at, look into this, because he doesn't do anything unless we ask him to do so. So technically this bill is a bill for data that he's been gathering along the way. Basically, yeah, he sits in on the uh, construction meetings right. for a little bit, you know. Yeah. He, he's the least expensive consultant we got working on huh. this project. And so he just has requested that report. Yeah, I just re requested that now. Yet. Yeah. So, yes, that makes sense. <laughs> Okay. End of questions? Okay. No further questions on uh, invoices. Uh, the fourth item, item D, is receive and file May financial report. Tom, anything you want to point out on the financial report? Um, I guess that will be on the electric one, not this one. Your, your question? Okay. Nothing on this one. Any questions from the board on the financial numbers? We just had. Tell me again what the employee benefits are. The what? Employee benefits. Well, diapers and. Uh, diapers is a separate line. Diapers, okay, yeah. Well, they've got stuff for uh, glasses and shoes and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. for the communication. Yeah, yeah. well, insurance. communication probably don't have is a lot. Is it health insurance? It's 36000 Okay, that, that'd be the health insurance. insurance. Health insurance for everybody or uh, employees? A and G and Janelle. Well, uh, yeah, half a time. Probably half of mine. Yeah. Okay, I just making sure it's so that's health insurance. You know, we're picking up all the share also. I don't know if we're splitting the cost between no, the two mine's utilities. Not in here. No, okay. Mine's not in until the end of the year. One more chance. Anything else? Hearing none, uh, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda with the four items. So moved. We already have it. Thank you. Oh, now you're asking. <laughs> you're I we have it. Uh, Got caught on that before. Let's go this. Once, yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimous. But thank you for your enthusiasm. Yeah, happy to <laughs> provide it. Yeah. Number four, receive and file communications, petitions, and remonstrances, stances. Nothing from Tom, Cindy, nothing. Anybody on the board receive any? None? All right. It's time for Sips and Simplet. I think we pretty well beat that to death tonight. There is now. Getting any phone calls in? I can't see him while I'm recording. Oh, okay. All right, well. Okay, uh, the next item six was old business. We have covered all three items on that. So we will go to number seven, new business. Updated 2080 agreement with CFU and others. This must be a Tom. Yeah, there's uh, three other municipals that are looking at joining this 2080 agreement, which is buying into the head end. I'm pretty sure New Hampton, Charles City, or I'm not sure about Pella. That's just gonna reduce our percentage down. So we'll get some money back eventually. But they haven't finalized. I think those other other towns haven't been through this yet, so they have more questions uh, on how it works. So I'm just letting you know uh, our percentage is going down. We'll get some money back. Great. Okay. Uh, 
July meeting, the re I asked the July meeting to put on here, it's actually on both of them, it's the same question for both. Uh, I will not be here for the July meeting. My intention is, is to join the meeting by phone and open the meeting and then I will turn the meeting over to whomever is here that wants to chair the meeting that's physically here. So I'm asking if there's someone who'd like to be there or do I appoint someone? <laughs> and they can decide whether or not they want to show up that night. <laughs> She's got tenure. Let's go from that perspective. Hmm. You're welcome. Well, the person I've seen run, the person I've seen running means here is Mike, and he does a very nice job. So that's fine. Is that okay? Uh, Tom, Tom, and I'll put the agenda together. We'll keep you in the loop so you know what's going on. And if you order in the meeting, that would be great. Okay, and if for some reason I don't have connectivity that night, you just go on and out. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I do intend to be here for the August meeting. Uh, C, office personnel pay increase. Tom had sent us an email with his recommendations. Tom? Yeah, and, uh, this is for the, the MCU. Uh -huh. um, I have done with the, the three that are working in there, currently are making and have made recommendations. Uh, and uh, try to put explanations as to why I was uh, wanting to do what I was doing. And I tell you, Angie's really been great working on this project, and uh, we got really blessed by having her because there's stuff there that I'm not even sure I'm always understand. So she's going through the softwares and that. So uh, we hit the jackpot, you know. And she's exceeded my expectations. And when I did the interview, I never dreamed she was going to be able to bring so much knowledge and help for that so and Corey, Corey said she was a yeah. great employee we wanted to definitely get her yeah well and they you know they tried to talk her into uh, we, I think we got her in July and they tried to keep her on until September and she said no way you know she I don't know if she knew how much work we were going to have but uh, I would have offered her a higher position pay wise uh, if I known what we were getting at the time so I was trying to make an adjustment here any board members have any questions or comments? I just echo that she's doing a fantastic job. She understands the business. She's got the great customer attitude. It's been it's been really good working with her. Yeah, and the other two have you know they work they all three work well together and uh, yeah. they all understand customer service and uh, like even with Tino, I'm trying to get her up to where more reasonable effort is. Uh, she came in at the the little totem pole when she started and. Uh, uh, and, and she brings some pretty good business savvy with her being out in the real world and that. So, uh, and now we've got reliable Cheryl. So I've been counting on her since the day I started. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments by the board? Very none. Uh, what is the wish of the board? It's a motion to approve these pay increases. I see heads nodding. You say it approve. verbal. Thank yes. you. <laughs> we have a motion to approve and a second. And We're Melissa. so used to our Zoom line. Yes, uh, Cindy. <laughs> yeah. One personal comment. Yes. Cheryl's been here like nine or ten years. Cheryl, how long? Nine. She knows the payroll, electric utility billing, budget, contracts with customers. She knows a whole lot of things. Not, not that Andy. Andy knows tons of stuff. Uh, you know, community. I would like to see at least Cheryl be comparable to Andy's. That's my personal thoughts. Not that you asked, but I threw it out there. No, I appreciate your comments. Yeah, I no. guess I didn't mean to close it down to other people in the room. <laughs> her pay rate or her pay increase? Percentage. I mean, Not comparable to Angie. To be comparable because she does stuff here at City Hall besides the communications office. I would just like uh, then maybe to be the same, I guess, is, is kind of what I'm saying. I don't have the number in front of me. What's the difference between the two? About oh, 58 cents. Yeah, 58 cents. Okay. Oh. Thank you. I read it earlier, but I didn't lock that number in my head. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I guess I would support what uh, Cindy's saying. Okay. Yeah. And we gave, well, I guess we, we can't. Can we talk about the other employees? Well, that's the other detail. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. We'll be talking about that shortly because we're going to be having the same conversation. Maybe the percentages, or <laughs> if that bothers anybody, they're a little bit higher compared to what we're normally doing. If that's going to cause, I know it seems like if when we gave percentage raises that were higher than everybody else, that caused problem with the city because they're 
employees who are upset that ours got better raises, but I'm just going to throw that out there. That might be an issue. Because some of these percentages, you know, they're 17 percent, 10 percent, 3 percent. They're not all the same. Right. That's the, the constantly the question on when it comes to wage increases is do you treat, every, treat everyone equally and percentages? Do you give people based on their workload, uh, where they're hired? Uh, what I'm hearing tonight is Tom's recommendation is based on not on equal percentages but on the workload and, and what they should be getting paid. What I'm hearing Cindy say is that uh, experience for, for Cheryl is, is uh, that she should be paid the same as Andy. Brett, not talking about percentages. Yeah, I did the calculation for the percentages too, and it's, I mean, I, anybody's going to compare that is going to say, "Well, what's going on here?" <laughs> so well, we're not we're not talking about increasing the pay based on percentage. Just throw it out, and uh, I'm an employee that does the same job as Angie. What's their pay rate? Is she comparable to that, or is she way below it, or way above it? I don't it? know about for I'm on because I'm not sure I'm on. Uh, it's where she used to work. That, well. That, uh, so the thing to think about is what's the job description? She's doing things that I don't know if you expected her to do, exactly. but I think what's going to happen in general is we're in startup mode. There are going to be there's going to be more work that comes in that's not what you expect from a customer service. I mean, it, her role is customer service, right? Right. But we're asking her to take on provisioning. We're asking her to take on project management coordination, right? Which is what we need, and she's willing to do. So I'm kind of interested in. You know, as we go a couple weeks here, a couple months, we're going to get some experience. We're going to get some huge uh, swings in in what we need for staff. And some of it will say, "I'm on that." You. Some of it is we got to organize and manage our own environment. I think I think it's huge transition. So, my perspective on it is we should be thinking about job descriptions based on what starts to happen in the communications utility because I don't know that we we predicted what it would be where we are now and we're fortunate that she's able to pick up all those tasks yeah. I think that's the basis of your comment I'm not yeah. she, trying she, to say anything about Cheryl because I I'm, yeah. well, I'm not no, trying no, to compare no, them at all nobody have ever balked about taking on extra load I mean they're all gone home right making this work for I'm just saying I think it'll behoove us to actually put good job descriptions together around the communication side because there are going to be some unique things and all three or more can can you know do those jobs. I'm just hopefully to by me this it's time next year we can have those job descriptions because we'll know what the job is for well, sure. Right. By then. Well, I mean we have a, <laughs> we have a sense of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mike, so. back to your question. My answer to the the other employees is that these are wage adjustments, not a salary annual salary increase. That's why they're so much higher because one does not expect we're going to do this every year. Right. This That's is a wage adjustment. For based on the duties that they're doing. Well, if they're doing a great job next year and all this, wouldn't you give them a bigger raise too? I mean, you can't just say it's not a one-time deal. I won't say it's not a one-time deal, but I'm saying this is a wage adjustment based on what they're doing. Not we're not thinking this is an annual percentage increase. So yeah, next year I would hope that we're closer to our wages are close to what the market says it should be. We don't need to don't need to raise them as much to stay with the market. And that longevity <laughs> pay complicates that in this town. Too. Well, yeah, we so have that too. So. That well, that's did, the next meeting. Did she start out at <laughs> enough? I mean, now you got to look at your base if you're going to do it on that. Did she right. start out low, high? And, and what, what, I mean, mm -hmm. if you're going to go by that. Right. And what we're asking her to do compared to what we thought. Yeah. Or what she thought when she was hired. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know what she's doing at I want. Maybe she's doing the same thing. I don't know. Yeah. Well, she was doing similar work. I mean, she's very knowledgeable. That Obviously, that's why we hired her. Uh, I'm sure they didn't want to lose her. So, you know, she had 18 years. Okay, uh, we have a motion in a second, and per Cindy's discussion, do we want I'm to amend? What's that? I missed who with the motion. The motion, was motion was made by <laughs> and second by Melissa. I was trying to tell you that as you cut in, <laughs> which was fine. <laughs> you we have need time? to re redo a motion with Cindy added, or do we? What is the wish of the, the board? It would be an amendment to the motion. Is what it would okay. be to okay. add that. Which would this be the appropriate time to do that if that is what the board wishes to do? I amend my motion to include, I make a motion to approve the office personnel pay increases with the amendment of petitioner Cindy added for Cheryl. Okay, 58 And 58, yeah, 58 as I was going to ask what's the exact yeah. number, 58 cents more. <laughs> okay, is like there a second to the amendment to add to increase Cheryl's 58 cents? 
same second. Melissa second. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? Adding the 58 cents to the original motion. Mm -hmm. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion amendment is passed unanimously. Got that, Cindy? Well. Okay. Got that? Okay. Now we're back to the original motion as amended to approve the wage recommendations with 58 additional cents for C for Cheryl. Any further questions on that? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion opposed. Hearing no opposed. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. Thank you all. Okay, moving on to number eight reports, Tom, for communications. Okay, um, I think FAR pretty much covered everything. Um, I think his data was uh, more accurate than what I just pulled out of uh, the last report we had for a number of sign ups. Yeah, please don't give us a different set because I was just confused. Yeah, well, the, the date <laughs> I had was as June 2nd, so here we are a week later. Uh, yeah. The numbers are going to change come Thursday morning again. So, yep. uh, so it's 6.03 as of today? As of today. Yep. I, am, uh, I asked uh, for an opinion from Ollers to uh, discuss about uh, sites that are right outside the city limits. On the north end, we go up there to Coop's Corner. There's four homes out there that would probably want to be hooked on and then on the south end we got four and uh, we could maybe serve them wi with a Wi-Fi but uh, this would be faster better better experience for them so I'm trying to get his opinion whether we can do it or not and I think he's given opinions in the past and I think Muni's have not followed it because they wanted to hook them up anyway Okay, well, let's hear what the meeting is when it gets here. <laughs> I don't know what he's, what he's, you know, these people have requested, they, they know that we're right across the, mm -hmm. the road, so it's, uh, yeah. you know, they want to get hooked up, and I said, we got to wait until we find out what the attorney says we can do. Absolutely. So the issue is, is that they're not within our... They're not in the city limits. They're not city limits. They're not, city limits. Not, okay. they're not in the city limits, they're just outside. That so it's not that they're outside of the boss. utility. That's well, we have <laughs> the, the other thing, we haven't charged anybody for anything yet, so I understand. That's not to say you couldn't charge them because they're outside. Yeah. But yep. It's, it's uh, a discussion until we find out what the attorney said. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I yeah. look forward to hearing that answer because they'll be it'll be asked again probably east of town before too long. So. Oh, that's the other <laughs> problem. Uh, <laughs> Anderson Creek has uh, got an elevation problem. They're two feet too low. Right. And uh, I've had far just go ahead. We ran duct out there, and I don't think we put any pedestals in place. All the materials we were going to use out there, we have now. And uh, they're either in the cold storage or out, out at 69 sub. And uh, there are six homes, I think, built. And some of them want service. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting on the developer to. Uh, Come to the rescue. You said we have duct out there. We just have a, a single, a main line out there. Well, we got a main line out there, and uh, yeah, we didn't uh, probably run drops. Well, even if we ran drops at home, that wouldn't change anything. It's the uh, the, the pedestals yeah. would be right. at the wrong elevation, they'd be two feet too low. Mm -hmm. right. They got the same problem on the electrical service that's in the ground. They have, everything's going to have to be raised. But uh, we only have the one connection out there at this point. So anything yeah. being installed. Well, it's, it's, it's affecting the uh, church before we sure. get out there too because yeah. they're on the same line I, was, I said we're going to wait until we get this resolved all at the same time instead of trying to run a temporary and yep. common in later so yep. I, i'm not sure where the developers at i mean i think they acknowledge they got a problem but uh, i don't see nothing happening yet and if they want to do this onesie twosie thing that's not going to be easy i'd rather mm -hmm. have get it all resolved at once in order to do it okay We'll keep us updated on that and keep working with them as best you can. Okay, and that's all in on the communication side. Okay. No, I just can I add a comment to, to that? Um, so we have 600, I think, subscribers. 603. So, but we have 50 some converted. So we really got to churn up the, the, the turn ups. Um, I mean, something like 25 a day is what we need to get to to hit our. 600 number in you know a month or six weeks so mm -hmm. we're 
So I know we're excited about the 600 and I am too, but those aren't revenue paying customers yet. I know you all know that. I'm just pointing that out. Yeah. That's not our total end game. You know, we've got to get them converted. So about the, of that internet only, that's about 55 to 57%. Uh, the next biggest is uh, internet and video around 17 percent and then it drops down to all services 11 percent and internet and phone seven and then we have some that don't want internet but want other services at seven percent so the internet ones i think are the easiest ones for us to turn on because we don't have to mess around with video and uh, everything else so that's what we started out doing but now i think they're going back and starting to do some of the others at the same time and we're trying to test out and make sure the video works and, yeah. I don't think, uh, I don't know if Corey actually said it, that the billing probably ain't going to be done until the middle of June. Yeah, 15th is the first round. Yeah, the first cycle is 15th. It's not that far away. No, nope, next week. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're paying for again. Aww. <laughs> I know, but I'm happy to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If no further report, Cindy, any report? Maybe Angie does. Is she still on? Uh, we, yeah, no, she's off. Yep. She just wanted out if we had any questions. So, yep. anyone else? Telecommunications. Motion to adjourn. Gerald, seconded by Mike. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passed unanimously. This meeting is adjourned. Order. We need a roll call vote. Of course. Yes. Baron. Here. Stop. Yes. Kim. Yes. 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 Thank you. So the first name basis with the females. I caught that. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to remember our last name sometimes. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, first item is to approve the agenda. Are there any corrections anyone wants? If not, I'm looking for a motion for approval. So move. Second. Second. Moved by Mike. Second by Kim. To approve the agenda, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Agenda is approved. Uh, number three, consent agenda. There are four items under this consent agenda. I'm looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'm looking at you, Gerald. Yeah, so looked out last time. I did. So Gerald makes Thank motion, you. second by Melissa. Uh, okay, we'll get back to that motion. Number first, item A on the consent agenda is receive and file the board meeting minutes of May 12th. hearing any questions or corrections or comments okay uh, B is approve invoices Tom do you, do you have anything you want to explain on these well we don't have anything that I can find from Central Cable it may have a big one that will be coming and I have talked to them about trying to get that to us before uh, the end of the month and I don't know maybe it doesn't make a difference but I know last year We'll have invoices coming in after this date, and I, I like to get them on the, the, the year that they were budgeted for, if, if they were, and get them paid that way. And I don't have to worry about the auditors, because even though we're on accrual, they took out a couple things in that last audit that uh, we paid for, and they took them out out of that project. Was the work done or whatever? Yeah, the work that was consulting work, it was all done. But it didn't get tagged. Did the consultant year. bill you in that year? Was so you, the consultant bill was it? Yeah, they were the next paid. Year, they were was paid during that year too. So. Okay. Well, it's not going to happen because we're not going to have that bill before the July meeting. So. Well. Yep. Because we haven't paid them in yet, right? Central. Oh. No, we paid them. Yeah. But this. <laughs> this final payment's going to be a bit that, that budget. Uh, <laughs> I thought that budget, budget tells you what we paid. I don't have it. It's on my computer. Um, we we paid uh, four million to them already. We paid that. Yeah. And there's going to probably be I don't know what it's going to be if it's going to be a million or whatever because there's a large amount coming for the stuff they did to finish the ducts and pull the fiber and. Uh, so that budget from far that had that in there being paid. Well, it's expenses. Uh, yeah, they had three point six million in twenty nineteen and uh, three hundred sixty thousand this year. 
It must have a different budget then because everything was blank. Well, this is the one I'm looking at. This is the one that, uh, that Matt. I just looked at the one we got emailed and I didn't think there's hardly any numbers in the paid columns. So I thought, wow, I can't believe that. Well, the, the 2018 doesn't have anything built in, but the 19 and 20 does. So. Right. I was surprised. Huh. Other questions? No, yeah, it's a little long. It's a duplication, but I don't care. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any other board members' questions? None? Okay. Uh, D is approving ener monthly energy adjustment. Anybody know what it was? Negative. Negative. Something. Zero zero eight or something. Zero zero eight. Point zero one five eight. And you're skipping over C? Oh, I did. Sorry about that. I put a check mark by it because I, I missed, I thought we were talking about the financial report. We were still on invoices. Apologize for that. And we'll back up to C, receive and file the May financial report. I do have a question on page two okay. where uh, we've got proceeds from debt. There's nothing in there. And I know we've got almost $6 million on the uh, series 219C. Okay. Down there at the bottom. Is that over on the balance sheet as an asset? I think, yeah, that was one of the entries that Mike wanted to move over to the balance sheet. That's, that's, the balance sheet. that's, that's a lot, that's a no, so it would be a liability. That'd be a liability. Okay. Well, we're still showing it on the, uh, Communication on the same yeah, location. communication still has it as proceeds from revenue, but yeah. you took our electric has it over there as a liability because we've actually received the money. It's it's a debt. I mean, it's a liability. It's not an income. It should be revenue. Yeah. Yeah. It's there. So, so the it's right, it's right communication will have to be moved to that. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood what was going on. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions or comments about the main financial report? No. Okay, here, hearing none, move on. Uh, back to the money adjustment. We just spoke of this point zero one five eight. Any questions or comments regarding that? We did get a first refund to the tune of uh, 28204 I think this is the first one I've seen since I've been here, and it may not be the last, but that's what's skewing this uh, amount right now. In the past, when we've gotten stuff back, I've been able to uh, spread it out over the full year, because that's how it was paid. Well, they didn't give me this option this time, so it's all coming in this month, so it makes the month look better than it really is. So. We need a good month. I'll take it. Okay. Anything else on the items under the consent agenda to discuss? Seeing none, uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Uh, now we go to number four. Receive and file communications, petitions, or remonstrances. <laughs> Anyone? I hate that word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I did get one letter from somebody that uh, wanted to get paid money. Uh, Central Cable put their uh, line in. They didn't hit their water line. They had a water leak already there. And uh, when they put the duct in, evidently it helped bring it to the surface. So they wanted to get paid. So I sent uh, Chris Ward to uh, look at to see who's responsible, if it was the cities or the homeowners. And I haven't heard back, but I, I don't think it's going to be the cities. And it's not central cable, so we're probably going to have an unhappy, uh, uh, I don't know if this is a business or, uh, <laughs> or a private, but just letting you know now. Okay. Anything else? Cindy, you have anything? No? Okay. Hearing nothing else, we'll move on. Again, citizens input. There's no one here to speak. Uh, old business, 
Uh, update from far has already been taken care of. Solar garden. Um, I wrote the solar garden and the and the school. Are there any questions about the solar garden that you really want to an have answered tonight that are bothering you? See, Mike, you had some question that you were at thinking earlier. Okay. I, I guess my first question is. Yeah. Are we doing this to replace our existing generation, or are we doing this to supplement it? Are we gonna? Okay, that, that, that's a good question. And uh, to me, that question leads to the idea of whether we are putting in a solar field as a utility to create generation, or whether we're putting in a solar field that is a community garden to allow our uh, customers to be able to take it be part of the solar, yeah. Be, be part of the solar because they can't put it on their home or whatever. You see, right. so the answer to your question is different depending on which way we go. And part of the mm -hmm. solar garden mm -hmm. is: do we have to put it in, or can the individuals put it in themselves to where we don't have any financial yeah. outlay? Right. There's two ways to do it. The way that uh, Rob was talking about the simplest is if the utility installs it and. The and then, lose their credit and then you can you can sell it to the customer pieces of it of points is what he called right. it. Okay, that's the easiest way. The other way is to actually go out and have meetings, talk to the citizens, have citizens come in, agree to buy so much of a solar garden, get however many you get together, and that's how big of a solar garden you build. Is that their only way of getting the federal credit? They have to purchase it. Not the My understanding was is that they had to purchase, but what I heard Rob say tonight is that the points will allow them to do that. That's the first time I've heard that said. I don't like, think that's accurate, yeah, I so I to get that. Yeah. we need to talk about that. Yes. So yes, I think you have the basic understanding correct. Those are those are our choices. Yeah. Um, uh, he was the last thing that Rob was talking about was talking about us putting in a solar field and then using that as an example to get to do the second part as the garden. I, I'm not propose, proposing either one of these two options that we should should do that one over the other. It seemed like it was uh, more of uh, more interest to the board members. Uh, Gerald one, was one in particular, and myself was to put the solar garden, so citizens could take it, take part in this. We're offering our citizens something because we are their utility as an opportunity to use some to put some solar in their home. I was seeing it more of as an opportunity that they could purchase an amount up to what they use. Well, I've been explained that that's very complicated as far as for the tax credits and so on, because you, you get different rules and regulations that start crossing in different angles and pretty much said run away from that is what I was told. So <laughs> uh, you'll be extremely sorry if you do that. So I, I'm, I've backed away from that thinking because that's the best I could think of for our customers from their point of view because then they would be able to match what their production with what they use, which would be perfect. It doesn't seem like it's going to be that easy to do. Uh, so then it falls back on the same as if I put the solar panels on my house. Okay? That same type of situation to pay for it. So I think most of us understand, been around that enough to really understand the basics of what that means. So back to your question. What is it this board wants to do? Do we want to create some sort of a solar garden for our, our constituents. Do we want to put in something for our own generation? Uh, at this particular point in time, either one of those options will pay for themselves in, in somewhere between seven and nine years at the outside, because we don't get the tax credits, but we actually can pay ourselves back faster than we're going to pay uh, the citizens. Um, so it's a reasonable return on a 30-year Lifespan. I like to say 25 year lifespan, because and then you know, if it's seven to nine years is paid for. After that, you're producing free electricity yourself. Um, so then I'll go back to Tom. What's that do to RPGI, our capacity credits? If we decide to replace, and knowing that we're a backup emergency producer, if when if we get rid of some of that, and now it's dark for a month we're called upon to produce, we don't have the ability to do it because we don't have the right type of equipment to produce power for an emergency. I don't think that we're talking about getting rid of any of our current generators. So I, I thought you were going to replace it if we went and bought some. I mean, 
If what, they're going to use it to replace a capacity, why do we keep everything else? The capacity, the capacity I'm thinking of, see that language is important. You're talking about the capacity that we have currently on site generation. I'm talking about replacing the capacity that we buy from other people, RPGI. Okay, so if we're. Two different things. So now, so, if, we yes. can, if we're going <laughs> to cut our costs, but yeah, not yes. affect our ability to produce when we need to, right. that's a totally different scenario. <laughs> that we're, we're not buying capacity from RPGI because we got a surplus. We're selling our. Surplus capacity. We're making money yeah. doing it. So now, if we don't buy as much from our PGI, that eliminates some of that capa excess capacity. Now, do we have enough money coming in that right now supports the plant itself and uh, pays all the bills, basically, and we still make money? Can we do that if we reduce what we buy from our PGI because we don't need as much power from them anymore? Well, the, the thing about the solar is. Uh, when uh, I ever talked to anybody that calls, I said, we'll buy your energy, you know, from the solar at uh, three and a half cents, because that's what we're paying from RPGI. It's the base load. It doesn't include transmission. So it's basically a wash that way so that uh, it's not really impacting financially. We're going to pay RPGI three and a half cents, or we're going to pay the homeowner. But I thought the amount we bought from RPGI because we have excess capacity. Yeah, we we got to buy our capacity and then we get a credit for our surplus capacity. So we're always making more. Now this, this solar, they won't give you, if you put in a, a thousand megawatt field, you won't get a thousand megawatt capacity credit. You might get uh, 200, uh, uh, it's like 20% or something that's derated. Wind's the same way. I think wind they might give them 40%. They never give them what, the, what they install because the wind doesn't blow 24 hours a day and the sun doesn't shine 24 hours a day. So is there a reason why we can't do both? That's the whole point is we're going to keep this and this yeah. isn't replacing our ability right. for backup and emergency. This is above and beyond, but it's going to reduce our cost and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I'm curious. I, I'm, I, you're talking about the credits that we get for excess capacity. Mm -hmm. Is that actually tied to our contract with RBGI? Or are they two totally separate things? They one does not have any effect on the well, other. It's, it's in our, our rate structure the way they got it set up. There's people in the RPGI group that have no capacity whatsoever. Well, guess what? They get it from those of us that, that have the surplus. Okay. But if we okay, are now, I understand. Okay, yes. So if we have <laughs> extra now, and we bring in more. More extra. So to more speak. extra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, more extra. <laughs> with. Oh, from solar. You want to make sure that what you're bringing in isn't costing you twice as much as if you went and installed a gas turbine or something. You know. Right. Well, yeah. of course. So yeah. when do we have excess capacity? When our generation runs? Well, or we because have, we, we buy so much and don't use it all? We, we test it every year. We have to run an accreditation test and, and uh, that's when everything's maxed out. I forget how many hours they make us run that. Sure. But that's how they'll say, okay, your plant's producing 17 megawatts. Our peak load's Five. We got five extra, but there's also a reserve component that they make you. I forget what it is, eight or nine percent, that you got to have on top of whatever your twelve percent load is. So you don't get the full five differential. Because if we run, we can produce more than we need, then they will buy that from us when they tell a line or whoever to go down because it's peak hours or whatever. Then we could produce. They buy from us. That so when do we run? We run when they tell us to, which is when it's super hot and super cold, okay. or somebody has fallen off the line and the grid's unstable. Okay. Or does that? So we're told when to run. Yeah, we. we yeah, they tell us when to uh, come okay. online. We're, we're right. basically a standby plant. It's not a base load plant. It's there to back up the grid. Okay. We're getting paid because we can do that because we have that capacity. Yeah. But if yeah. So okay. I, back to Mike's original question, we need to make sure that that what we're ta whatever we do, if we do anything, doesn't affect that negatively, or at least too negatively. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, and I, I can <laughs> talk to the gal that uh, works the closest with MISO and ask her what the pros and cons are, uh, how does it impact us, if at all. We shouldn't be the first ones to ask this question. No, because <laughs> <there's, laughs> we're not the first one that's put solar in. No, nope. you know, Yeah, you be. talked about several <laughs> projects that were... Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'd like to get his project list. But some of the projects, they may not produce their own, or they right. may not have a plant in that right. town, or whatever. So you got to compare apples to apples here. And, uh, yeah, this is the first time I've got to the point where I know we're not getting rid of what we got. We're just mm -hmm. trying to add to it. I, yeah, that's I've been wondering ever it since was, we started talking here. Yeah, right. that's 
we've had such a disjointed conversation, and then of course we had almost three months go by. <laughs> so we just had a catastrophic failure on one unit there, the largest one over there. Uh, we had to spend a million bucks, but you know, it was, uh, didn't cover my insurance. But uh, if we hadn't done that, we'd lose that that capacity, and we wouldn't get paid for that. So exactly. I don't think anyone on the board is interested in getting rid of the power plant at all. I don't think anyone on the board is interested in putting in a solar that's going to negative effect the power plant or our grid system in too great of a manner. I mean, we're willing to take some pros and cons. So starting from that basis, it's nice to be able to just talk about, okay, what is it we might want to do? And I think we're there finally, yes. which is great. <laughs>